Hi, I'm Jason Barnes. I play drums and I'm a student here at Atlanta Institute of Music with one distinguishing feature. I have a prosthetic arm. Well, I played drums since I was 15, so it's going on eight, nine years now. Um, I played for, I started off playing um, a lot of blues and jazz stuff, um, kind of got more into metal and from, from there I kind of went straight into reggae rock, blues kind of feel stuff. He comes from a musical family. His father is a professional musician, he's a guitar player. And although when Jason was raised when he was little, his father wasn't playing music, but he definitely had it in his blood. And my father, he wasn't a musician, but he had an incredible ear for music. And um, he's just got it in him. I got really interested in going to AIM uh, fall winter of 2011. And I had heard about it from just a lot of mutual friends and, and a lot of bigger musicians that I knew of had all graduated from AIM. And uh, it sounded like a really great school. And so I went there, went for a tour around the school, got everything set up for an audition, which was, I want to say it was scheduled sometime around January 12th or something like that, um, which was three days after I had got electrocuted, so I never made it. I uh, got electrocuted at work um, January 9th of 2012. I uh, used to clean restaurant vent hoods, um, the exhaust, um, anywhere from the kitchen to the ducts to the fans on the roof. And I went to work one day, it was a little misty outside and it was a job that I had never done before. And I, I don't remember any of it. And I want to say, according to my assistant, about 30 minutes into the job, I was carrying a pole up to the roof to scrape the ducts and I'd walked by a power line and according to my assistant the electricity arced off of a power line onto a pole that I was holding and then the transformer exploded and they rushed me to Grady Burn Unit. I got a frantic phone call, it was on a Monday, I remember very clearly on January 9th I was at the post office about quarter to five and it was his girlfriend who was down visiting from Virginia Beach and she was hysterical when she said you gotta come quick you know, Jason's been electrocuted. And so I was right in the middle of the post office and I'm standing in line and I go, what? Jason's been electrocuted? And that was like, you could hear a pin drop in the post office and everybody's going, go, go, go. You know, it was, and so I kind of dropped what I was doing and, and told Amanda I'd pick her up because she was on the way. And I said, well, where is he? She, she got rushed off by an ambulance. And so we kind of worked out that he was going to Grady. I woke up in the hospital, um, yeah, about a day and a half, two days after that had happened, and I had no idea what happened to me. I was just burnt and crisp, and I thought that I was in some kind of explosion or a fire, and everybody had to explain to me that I'd got electrocuted and, and everything, and I don't even remember going to work that day at all. We kept calling the hospital the whole way there. There's no Jason Barnes here. There's no Jason Barnes here. I'm thinking, well, maybe he's been taken to a different hospital. And we kept calling, and so we got to, finally got to the hospital. We'd called five minutes before, and they hadn't, still, there was no Jason Barnes. So we went in there, and I said, are you sure? And they said, he's just been admitted. He's in the triage room. You can go see him. And uh, so we went in there, and there was Jason on, on the table. This whole side of his face was burnt hair singed off, eyebrows, eyelashes. I didn't really have any experience with electrocution or anything, and, and the doctor said, well, we're getting ready to rush him off to surgery. And so they took Jason off to surgery, and it was maybe seven o'clock at night. Meanwhile, we're in the waiting room, waiting. Finally, it was late at night, and they let, they let um, my, his older brother and myself go in and see him, and it, it broke my heart. And even then, though, we had no idea what kind of ride we were going to have. You know, I just thought, okay, you know, he's in the burn unit. You know, not still not realizing the severity of what happened. After about seven surgeries of debriefing on my hand, they had just realized that my two main arteries were completely shot and it wasn't supplying blood to my hand. 
and if I decided to keep it, it would be a really, really long process, and I'd be lucky if I could, you know, barely move my fingers again, so I just kind of was the one to tell them, you know, what, honestly, what is the better idea here? What is the fastest way to get up and out of this? The doctor did tried so hard, Dr. Ingram, to, to save his arm, you know, re help Jason through all the burn damage, and I mean, Jason had holes in his back, you know, where the electricity came out and big scars and I mean it was it was pretty awful. Yeah, I shouldn't even be alive honestly, according to all the doctors. Going in my hand it should have should have stopped my heart. I should have brain damage. Um, a lot of internal failure a lot of people get from taking that much electricity. When Jason realized, you know, that this was it, you know, we, we got the doctors in there and he said and it was, you know, coming from somebody so young and so drugged up from all the medicine he's had and so many surgeries and he said to the team he said okay docs level with me you're gonna make this hand ever work they all kind of looked around and there was a whole team of them and they said no jay said okay we're gonna cut it off yeah i thought my my life was over i just you know because i used to play guitar bass piano everything and and i thought hey i'm not gonna play drums anymore i'm not gonna be able to play guitar and you start thinking of all the little little things that you can't you know do with one arm and yeah it really got to me for for a good while there and even after being released from the hospital i still struggled with it a lot until i got my prosthetics and just kind of you know did what made me happy the thing that broke my heart the most you know jason said when he realized and he, you know he broke down you know mom i'm never going to play drums again I'm never going to be able to be a musician. I'm never going to be able to do all those. I mean, it was like grieving for just like somebody died. You know, his life as he knew it, his plans, his dreams, everything died. Um, and it was like the most, I, should, I can't talk about this without getting upset. But um, we, we got through it. The human spirit, and especially Jason's spirit, you know, he's like his mom, that you can't let a crisis define your life if that's where your life is, you know, and that's who you are. And, you know, he not only barely got home from hospital, it wasn't even a week later, you know, still bloody stump, bandages, nothing, no prosthetics, anything, and he drug his drum kit out of the garage and uh, set it up, just his couple of drums, set them up on the back porch taped a drumstick to his bandages to see, is it possible that I could still somehow play drums? And um, he played for a few minutes under excruciating pain because, I mean, his amputation was still so fresh. And um, I can do this. She says, I can do this. And I'm just so proud of him. And the fact that it's a miracle that he's here at AIM because our whole life in this last year has been so traumatic and, and everything's just been on blind faith, hope, and prayer. And he shouldn't be here. We don't have the money. We can't afford it. But it's his dream. And, and he's got such talent. And coming to AIM to me is the most amazing thing Jason could be doing right now. It's just. I just think it's so wonderful for him to be here, and it's such a miracle. And I'm just so grateful that these doors are opening. And um, I just love him, and I just want the best for him as his mom, and I know he's gonna do so well. My hopes and dreams for my life are basically to do what I love, which is to play music and survive doing it, you know? Um, and my hopes from AIM is exactly that, is I hope to get out of AIM and you know, be one of the best drummers there is out there, and, um, be able to get anything handed to me and just be able to do it like that. Uh, I'd eventually like to play in my own band, um, not just session or studio things. Um, but yeah, just music, that's what I want to do with my life.